Hey everybody, DJ here, and this is part four of our Vintage Coffee Cup tutorial series. And in this one, we're going to be covering rendering. But before we do that, we have to add a couple things and make some adjustments. So go ahead and open up Blender. And this is basically what you should have from last time. So we added these materials here, and it looked really good in the EV Previewer and all that. But we're going to be using primarily uh, cycles in this one, so be prepared that that is the uh, render engine of choice that we're going to be doing for this particular final render because it just looks nicer and there's some really great things about it so just be prepared for that and before we begin what we have to do is we have to actually make the uh, the liquid inside so other tutorial series have done this already but I am going to do this as well just in case you don't know how to do it now a lot of times what they will have you do is they'll have you uh, select the coffee cup They'll have you select these inside here, um, make a duplicate and all that. But since we kind of changed this um, geometry a bit, the doing that's going to make a couple issues. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to start a brand new object here. And I'm going to call this, instead of cup, I'm going to call it coffee cup. Coffee cup. And I'm going to kind of do this a little quick because I don't think that you guys really need me to show you how to do this exactly. Basically, we're just going to be adding a new circle and we're going to be creating it to look at look basically like the same shape here. Um, now, when we do this, what you need to do, so I'm going to add the circle here. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to go into the vertex select here. And I'm also going to go into the wireframe. What we need to do when we make this is we have to actually uh, make this so that it's just inside of the geometry of the cup. There is uh, documentation out there. You can read on it as to why. I'm not exactly sure what the actual reason is. I don't remember. Um, all I know is that it works. So when you're doing fluids or liquids on the inside of a object, make sure that you have it built so that the outside of it is actually inside of the geometry of the thing that it's within especially if it's a glass cup or something like that. So really all we're going to do here is we're just going to take this uh, and we're going to extrude it, scale it, and basically get it to the proper shape of the cup or get it as close as you can. As long as it's inside of the cup, it should be completely fine. So I'm going to speed up this part so that you guys don't watch me doing this. It's rather easy and all that, so stand by. One thing that uh, I did here on accident, I actually want it to be below the cup. Uh, sorry, below the uh, ring, the metal ring that's on the cup. See that thing right there? That's supposed to be like the fill line. So I'm just going to take this top part and just uh, pull it down a little bit. Okay, so you should have something that pretty much looks like this. If I turn on the X-ray viewer here and I go to solid mode, you can see that it's built just on the inside of the cup here. And that's pretty much what we want. Looks like this part can use a little bit more. And this down here, we can scale that out a little bit more. And something like that should work out just fine. Now, I'm going to turn this off. With fluids, what you really need to make sure of is that you have sort of realism going on there. So when fluids are inside of a cup or something like that, a container, there should be a little bit of surface tension where you see like sort of like a little rounded effect going on the side. And I'm going to actually add, uh, I'm going to save really quick. So I'm going to go file, save, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier here. And we'll just do two and shade it to smooth. And what we want, if you look at it here, if we look at it by itself using forward slash on the numpad, you can see that there's this weird sort of rounded effect. And what we actually want is for it to like hug the cup and then come down like a little arc like this. So how you do that is if we turn back on the coffee cup or get out of local view, take this here and hit G twice to pull it out to the edge. And then if you take all of these uh, vertices here, or the edges, if you take this edge and this edge here, and hit G to grab, pull it down. Oops, I forgot this set here. G and pull it down on Z. 
you should start to see that little bit of a dip effect going on. And if I grab the edge here, go back to solid mode, and you pull that in, you can kind of see that effect a little bit more. If you pull it up on Z, you should be able to see that effect. Now there is uh, probably an issue going on here. If I go to the overlays and I go down to normals and turn that on and I crank this up, uh, you can see that you don't see any blue lines coming out of here. And that's because the normals are probably flipped the wrong way. So if you select all, go to mesh, oops, go to mesh, normals, recalculate outside, there you can see it's done more correctly. So basically what we're trying to do here, let's go ahead and turn that off so that we're not super distracted. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to create that little bit of a dip effect. And we might have, let's turn this on here so we can actually see those edges. We might have gone a little bit too far there. So let's go like this. And that actually looks pretty good. We don't wanna to go too far, but we just wanna give it just enough so that it has a little bit more realism. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do, let's go ahead and save it here. We're going to change the cycles. So go to your render settings. I'm actually going to get rid of these here. And it looks like I didn't turn on the screencast keys. So there's a screencast keys for you down there on the bottom left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start shading this. So change your render setting over here from EV to cycles and your device. I'm going to keep mine on CPU just for now since we're going to do a little bit of volumetrics and CPU kind of handles volumetrics a little bit easier without some crashing issues. So I'm just going to leave it on CPU for right now. But you probably want to use the GPU because you probably don't have as fast of a CPU as I do. If you want to use GPU, go to GPU compute, go to edit, preferences, if, you, if that's grayed out, and go to system and use OpenCL or CUDA here if you have an NVIDIA card. Okay, I would not recommend using optics right now since there are quite a few issues with that right now. So OpenCL or CUDA. Now I'm just going to use CPU for now. I'm going to save my file. And before we continue, I'm just going to turn this off. And we're going to shade this liquid right here. So let's open this up and let's go over to our materials tab right here. So let's hit new and we're going to call this coffee. Okay and change this to the compositor. And I'm used to doing it this way because I'm from the old school before we had all these tabs, so I do it this way. You can feel free to navigate over to the shading tab if you'd like to do this. I just prefer this side to side because I'm used to it. So over here on the left, we're gonna have our fluid. And we're gonna go to rendered and take a look at this. And actually change this to shader editor here. And here we go. So we have the principled BSDF and there it is right there, but that's not really what we wanna use. We're gonna get rid of this by hitting X. We're gonna add shader, glass shader. And using the uh, Node Wrangler add-on, so make sure you have that enabled, Control Shift, left click, and there is our glass. I'm gonna go ahead and save here. So that looks okay, and you can cha change this and make it like that if you'd like, or if you don't, if that seems too dark to you, you can change it to a darker color or something like that. But really, this just isn't enough for me. This this sort of shading isn't quite enough, and I think a lot of tutorials sort of do this sort of shading. And what I'm going to show you is a little bit more of a complex way of shading this to make it look a little bit more realistic. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be adding a bit of a transparency effect on the edges because often when you look at liquid towards the edges, it's a little bit more transparent. And we're also gonna be adding a volume to this that will be a different color that will make it mimic uh, fluids and stuff like that a little bit more realistically. So we're gonna keep this as it is except for changing the IOR to a 1.5. I said changing it to a 1.5. And we're gonna add, Shift A, add the uh, transparent right here. Okay. So then we're going to add a shader mix and then take these and pipe these into the mix shader and view with control shift left click the mix shader. And you can see here, if we go left to right with the factor, you can go from transparent like that there. And on the right, you have the glass BSDF. Okay. So 
what we want to do is we want something to control this. And how we're going to do that is we're going to add what's called, if you do a search here, for a layer weight. We're going to add a layer weight. If we control shift left click through here and look at the Fresnel, you can see that it has this sort of effect where it's basically looking at the shaping of the geometry to control the white and dark values, the light and dark values. And if we look at facing, basically the wherever we look at it is what's changing how it is being shaded instead of just the geometry. And with uh, fluids and all that, a lot of times the way that we look at it will control whether or not those areas look more thick or, you know, a little bit less transparent or a little bit more transparent depending on how we're looking at that particular object. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this facing effect here. And if we throw that into the mix shader, you can see that it's having an effect. The middle of it is transparent, but the edges are not. And we kind of want the opposite for how we're going to be doing this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the glass and the transparent and swap them where they're located, and then take these and swap those, just like that. And we can actually control this. You can change the blend by increasing this or decreasing this. And you can also add a converter color ramp here and change the values here to make it more or less prevalent, just like that. Now that's not all we're going to do. We're also going to add a volume to this liquid so that even when it's transparent, there's a little bit of an effect and it has a little bit of a changing effect depending on how you're looking at it and what the shaping is that you have for that particular object. So if we go to Shift A, Shader, we're going to go to Volume Absorption take this volume and put it right in there where it says volume. You can see it went really dark and that's okay. Just take the color, move it all the way up. And now we can change this to something else. And you can see that it's having a, a different effect on how the uh, liquid is being rendered. So let's do maybe something like this here. And for this, maybe we change it to something else. Maybe something like that. And again, you can change this density here to make it not so, so um, prevalent. But you can see where the transparent part is here. I'm going to turn off the overlay. Where the transparent part is there, I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to save here. If I take away this volume, see the effect? And if I add it, there you go. It's a little bit more like how you'd actually see it inside of a glass. So that's basically what we're doing there. And if we turn back on the coffee cup, that's what it looks like on the inside. And so you'll want to have that kind of on so that you can uh, make the adjustments you need to make here. And this isn't going to be the final of the um, the background either, so you have to take that into account when you're doing this. But basically, use this as a guide, um, this, this background that we have here as a guide, and just kind of look at it inside of the cup. And you can see that we're getting more of what we can expect to see from like a sort of uh, liquidy uh, or uh, coffee sort of look on the inside of that. And again, just keep playing with these, changing them around, altering it. You can change the uh, ramp here to change how uh, transparent everything is. So, you know, you can use this here to change that. And you can use this facing here. So I'm just going to play with this and speed it up really quick until I get the look that I really, really want. One thing that I'm noticing here, it looks like that there is a part in the in the center here that's not quite on the inside of the geometry of the glass. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. I'm 
And so there we go, we fixed that issue there. So I think that's pretty good for now. Um, the lighting, like I said, is not exactly what we're going to end up using. Um, and maybe, you know, we could spend a little bit longer playing with these. You know, maybe something more like, you know, that is what we need to do or like this. So, you know, make sure that you play around with these and get it exactly what you want, whether you want it to be a tea or a coffee or anything like that. Okay, so once you have the material effect that you'd like to see for this liquid in your cup here, we're going to do a couple things. So number one, let's move this over here. What we're going to do, let's save. We're going to add a plane. So shift A, mesh, plane. Scale that sucker up. Oops, scale it up. Let's look through our camera here. And how we're going to set this up is we're going to put this cup in the bottom right of our frame. So with our composition here, I'm going to go over to select our camera. Go to the camera settings and where it says viewport display here, go down to composition guides and we're going to use the, let's do it with thirds here. And we're just basically gonna put this over on this side, okay? So go to view, lock camera to view. We're going to put it over here and kind of position our camera a bit so that it's on this lower side over here on the right third. Okay. So something maybe kind of like this. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scale up this plane until it takes up the entire frame. We're going to go over here and unlock it from the camera view so we can kind of cruise around. And I'm going to show you a really cool cheat. So this will help you with creating a three-point lighting setup in a very quick way. So go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Search for just put three. And I think it should show up. Nope, just put up Light. There you go. Lighting, Try Lighting. Click that on. Close this out. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to add an empty here, plane, planes with axes, and scale that up a bit. Oops, that was a little bit much, so about like that. Hit Control A to apply the scale. And then now, when you hit Shift A, and if you go to Light, you'll see three-point lights. Boom, just like that. So really easy, and you have the where it's set right here. It's uh, kind of in relation to the camera, but not quite. But we can basically just move around where the lights are pointed, and you can see that it starts you off with these area lights. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. I'm going to scale this up a, like a bit more since that's this is going to be our key light. This is going to be our fill light and that's going to be our backlight. So I'm actually going to change this one to a point light. But you can see here if you grab it with G and you move it, it's still directed at that object, which is our empty here. Okay? And we can name this empty light uh mm, target. There we go. Light target. Oops, looks like I changed that. Okay. So basically what you can do there is very easily put together a three-point lighting setup with a target in a really, really quick way. Then you can take this key light here, move it back so that it's behind your camera. Take your fill light here, move it back over here. And you can see they're named like these two. So key light, fill, and backlight. Let's uh, hit Control S to save. And what we want to do is we also want to grab an HDRI. So if you go to HDRI Haven, HDRI Haven, oops, HDRI Haven. And make sure you donate if you can, because it's a pretty wonderful website. Go to HDRIs, indoor. And what you kind of want is something that's like the inside of a house, kind of like this one here or something like that. Because, well, at least for me, either a cafe or on the inside of a house, because I think it looks a bit better, uh, this particular scene, when you have something like that. And the one that I chose 
is the Kiara. So if I go here to choose, I chose the Kiara interior, this one right here, Kiara interior 4K. And if we look at it and go to rendered, you can see we have a white plane and then we have our lights here that aren't really doing anything. So don't worry about the lights for the moment. Let's actually just kind of turn those off. And we're actually going to add a texture to this so that we can look at it a little bit easier. So if we go here and instead of HDR Haven, we go here to Texture Haven. I love this website. Go to Textures, go to Wood, and download this kitchen wood right here because it's a wonderful texture set. Um, I have the 4K PNGs and JPEGs, but you can get whatever you think will work with your computer. And we're going to go ahead and add this new material. So I'm going to go to solid mode here, open this up, hit N to move all these windows, go to shader editor here, hit new, call it table. Then if we click our principled BSDF here, hit control shift T, then uh, navigate to wherever you've set that. So let's see, it's in here somewhere. Kitchen Wood 4K. Select all of them. And then click this button here that says Principled Texture Set. Boom. It automatically pipes it in. And if we look at it here, if we go to Rendered, you'll see it looks pretty big. That's really easy. All we have to do is go over here where it says Mapping, change this here. Uh, if you uh, left click select and drag down, you can select all of them and put a 10 in here or something like that and you'll get something that's tiled in this manner. The next thing that I'm actually going to do is I want to use, there is a light in here. You see that light right there? I want that to be more of a backlight because you can see this really cool effect that it has here. You see that? And if I look at it from our camera, eh, it's kind of dull, right? So what we can do here is if we go up here to Shader Editor and then change from Object to World. Here is our world setting. So you can actually change the strength here. You can change the image here, just like you would if you were looking at an object. And if we hit Control T on this here, and make sure you have Node Wrangler on because that will make this easier, you get a mapping and the texture coordinate here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this. And if you just click and drag the Z, it will update. You can see in the background there, it's moving around, moving around. And I already know that I want this to be at 168 degrees. And there we get a really cool effect on that background. You see that? It's really neat. Now, my computer is pretty fast. And, you know, you might be going, wow, like, I don't see it that fast. Whatever, like, that's nice. Um, what will help you out here is if you go to your uh, output properties here, and you click on this right here that says Render Region, it will only render that section. And I'm going to save here. If you have, uh, if that's still not good enough, if you go here to Crop to Region, uh, Crop to Render Region, click on your camera, and then, see, that's why I saved. So let's do that again. Crop to uh, region, click on the camera, and do it this way. Don't, don't do it while it's rendering, because sometimes it can crash. Go to rendered, and there you go. You can actually just look at that particular section at a time so that it's a lot faster, OK? So let's go ahead and reset that by dragging these. Oops. Make sure you have the camera selected when you do this. Drag this out. I'm going to save again. and. There's one thing about this background that's not quite right. And it takes a really trained eye to really see this type of stuff, but I want you to kind of get used to it. And I cover this in my tutorial series on the basic geometric shapes. And what it is, is that um, there is no layer weight that's directing how the roughness map is actually playing on the background. It's kind of like a flat map. And in reality, when you have uh, anything that's a shine or a reflection or roughness, basically, bef the more you get to the edge of an object, the more reflective it should get. 
and the more flat to camera it is, it should be less reflective. But the principal BSDF, the way that it's designed, isn't, and I have to change this here to object, it's not automatically put in here with its calculation of the roughness. So you're going to have to work with me here and just kind of look at how this is right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to search for a layer weight. Put it here. We're going to then search because I already know what's going to happen. We have to invert this value. And again, you'll have to look at my beginner's tutorial series to understand more in detail why I'm doing this. And I'll put a card in so you can go to that uh, video. So if you go here and we take a look at the facing, as we did before, and turn this up to a 0.9 or something, see that black dot right there? That's going to be more reflective because in roughness, whatever's dark is more uh, reflective and whatever's white is more rough. So we take the facing, we put it into this invert here, and if we look through there, now it's the opposite. So if we go to a more extreme angle, you can see that it gets more and more and more black, which means it gets more reflective. So in order to use this with our roughness map, we have to use what's called a mix, a color mix right here, mix RGB. You're going to put the roughness value into the top. That's from our image map right here. Then you're going to take this invert right here and you're going to pipe it into the bottom. And if we look through there, we can see what it's doing, which right now, if we move it left and right, it's only doing one or the other. Then you're going to change this top from mix to multiply. And now, if you drag the factor over, it's going to multiply the factor over so that you get that added to it. Hopefully that makes sense. So the more extreme, the more reflective, and the more straight onto camera, the less reflective it gets. And if we change the blend to be a little bit less, something like this, let's say, and now look through the principled BSDF, we get a much more realistic look to that background. The last thing that we really need to do here is we need to add a little bit more control because this is like a just oiled surface here. So we're gonna add a converter color ramp and we're going to use this color ramp right here, if we look through it, to control how shiny this really gets. So here for this black, I'm going to change it to something like that. I'm going to pull this over just a bit, maybe like this, and then look through there. And we can then control even more how this reflectivity is being controlled with this color ramp. So you can feel free to do that as much as you'd like. Um, and get the sort of effect with this background that you like. I do kind of like the shininess. It is a little strong, so maybe I'll pull that up a little bit and also reduce some of this. Um, I'll actually change, let's change this facing here. Maybe more like that. That might work out a little bit better. Let's take a look. Maybe something like that will work out a little bit better. Now there's one more thing that's uh, kind of missing as far as our composition is concerned. This cup looks pretty lonely. Um, there's really not a lot of stuff going on. And we're doing this before we actually do our lighting. So just, um, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to handle the uh, these different lights here in a second and handle the final lighting in the background in just a moment. But it's kind of lonely here. So if you did make the saucer, you could use that in your composition or if you made a spoon or anything like that from uh, other tutorials. Uh, if you guys want, I can show you how to make a spoon. I can show you how to make the sugar cubes and all that other stuff. Just let me know what you uh, want me to do there. But very simply, just to kind of fill up the frame a little bit more, if we take this and we just sort of duplicate it, Move it over here, maybe. Rotate it on X 180 degrees to flip it upside down. And maybe place one like that. Maybe rotate it around like this. Maybe move it back over here. Just kind of put like five of them or something like that. Rotate them all a little bit more so they don't look quite so placed. Maybe... That one has the handle pointing that way. 
And this one has the handle pointing. Let's make this one like that. And this one maybe like that. Maybe like this. And that will kind of fill up the frame a little bit more so we have more to look at here. The last thing we can do is we can go up to our camera. If you have that selected, I'm going to save real quick. Go over here to the camera settings. And go to depth of field. Check this box on here. And change the f-stop to a 1.0. And that will add a little bit of a depth of field to the shot. Now let's go ahead and we're going to actually turn off the background. So take the strength. Go down to zero, so that's in the world settings there. So change the surface here and put that to a zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on these lights. And they're super dark right now. So what we're going to do is for our key lights, let's go ahead and put a 500 in here. For our fill light, this should be uh, roughly half of that. So let's do a 250. And it should be scaled up a bit more than the uh, key light here. And for this, which is our backlight or our rim light, let's move it back this way a little bit. And I'm actually going to pull it down a bit, I think. And this should be around, I would say, you know, you could do, it's hard to say what you should do with these backlights because I really like it sort of showing off some of the rim of my objects. So let's try 600. So maybe something like this can do just fine. And now let's turn back on our background. So go to the surface here and change the strength here to a 1. And there we go. Now it's really, really bright. And one way that we can sort of control the uh, rendering of this, and this is something that not many people really go over, so you'll have to sort of pay attention here. Um, this is really, really bright, and we have a lot of clipped highlights, so a lot of values that are, you know, um, too bright for things to kind of register the math. Uh, usually the, the math goes from a 0 to 1 for blacks is 0 and 1 is white, and if it's beyond that, it becomes like a... Uh, really uh, kind of like an extreme white value that you can't really get any detail out of. So we want to kind of control that a little bit. So if we go up to the render settings here and click on color management, where it says view transform here. Oh, let's actually go back here. I forgot to change this. I'm sorry if the interface was too small. I'll change the resolution to 1.5. So you can see this a little bit easier here. Go to the color management and change this from filmic to false color. And basically, the red means that it's really, really bright. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but there's a little bit too much in this scene right now. And what you can kind of do to check which is causing that is you can turn on different lights. So turn this on and off, and you can see that that backlight is on a little bit high. So it's a little bit hot back there. So if I go to 500, maybe 350, something like that to uh, sort of knock that back a little bit. But really what's causing this is the background. So if we change the um, strength here to a 0.5, and, or if we just turn this off, you'll kind of see how the background is uh, making everything else really, really bright. So let's actually put this at a 0.5. And let's take this backlight and still knock it back maybe to a 250, maybe a 200, <laughs> maybe something like that. And let's go back to the settings here, color management right here, and go back to uh, filmic. And here we get something that's a little bit more like this. So it's a little bit easier to see the, um, the details and the brights and the darks, and it's not going to hit us in the face so much with the brights. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a before and after of when you apply the, and I'm just going to bring up the shader editor here, if you apply this method, the layer weight, invert, multiply, and then using this color ramp to create that more realistic reflection effect to all of your objects here, including this uh, fluid, you're going to have a very different, uh, I mean, it's not going to be like night and day, but you're going to have a much more realistic render in the end. And I'm going to show you what one looks like versus the other. So. Um, I'm going to render this one out and just show you that. And then I'm going to render you, I'm going to render out the other one 
with that applied so you can see the difference and you can decide whether or not you want to take the time to do that. So I'm going to hit Control S to save here and I'm going to, um, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. So here's a before and here's an after. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply these node changes here to the, uh, the rest of our materials and um, that's how I'm going to do the final render. So if you're going to work with me on that, go ahead and do that. If not, go ahead and skip to this time code to do the final composite and final uh, render outputs. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to take the layer weight. I'm actually not going to take this. Uh, yeah, no, because the other ones do have color ramps. So I'm going to take the multiply here, the invert, and the layer weight. I'm going to hit Control C. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to apply these to our other materials. So if I go in here and we look at the metal, hit Control V, and I grab them. Make sure you hit G to grab it. I'm actually going to turn on my, oh, it looks like it's, is it in here? Screencast keys. There we go. Sorry they keep turning off. I don't, <laughs> sometimes that happens. So that's why I have the uh, backup down here on the bottom left. So what we basically want to do here is take this multiply and just take this right here, put it into the top like that, and then take this color and just pipe it back into the color ramps that we already have here. Now you could go in, go to this isolated mode here, and really play with all of these if you'd like, um, and shift all of these and change the blend here to be more or less. It's really going to be up to you on how much you want to spend, how much time you want to spend doing all that, because you could spend forever doing that. I'm pretty much going to just copy and paste them and just sort of like maybe change the darkest value a little bit and pull it back or something like that, or maybe change the middle value here. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of changes. I'm just going to do just enough to where you can really tell the difference, okay? So go ahead and play with that or the... Uh, the layer weight and the facing here and the amount that you want to multiply it. You can go ahead and play with that as much as you want, but I'm mostly just going to do what I just did here, which is take these, control C to copy, click on the ceramic blue one here, for example, paste it, hit G to grab all of these, move the color ramp over a little bit and just take this, pipe it into the top of this multiply node here and then take that and pipe it right into there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part so that you don't have to watch me um, do all of that. But if you want, take your time, make sure that you do it exactly the way that you want it to be. And I will see you at the end of all of this. So um, you can kind of watch as I fast forward it, um, it's up to you. So just really quick for the liquid here, since we don't actually have a roughness map that we're piping in here, all we really need to do is use this layer weight here for the uh, overall roughness and throw that into the roughness here. Actually, we do need a color ramp, but we don't need the mix uh, to, um, we don't need the mix node to multiply the value. So if we take a look at this, um, the roughness should be, you know, something like, like very much not um, an obvious roughness for that. So just enough. And that should do just fine for what we need. Okay. So I just added a little bit. You don't really need to add this for this particular um, material here, but I added it anyway. So there it is. Okay. So uh, now we're going to basically set this up to do a proper render. And what we're going to do here is it's already set to 1920 by 1080. I'm going to change this to 200 because I like to do two, uh, 4K. If you don't think your computer can handle it, you can change it to a 100% uh, or 150% if you can, and then down, uh, down res it later to a 1920 by 1080 to tighten up the image. 
down here, let's go ahead and take uh, for the output, take the compression down to zero just for now. And what we're going to do is go here. I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to save here and I'm going to go to GPU and I'm going to turn on Edit Preferences System. I'm going to turn on both of my Radeon 7s. And if you're using GPUs, um, and for me, the two GPUs are faster than using the CPU with them, what I will do is I will go down to the, uh, well, let's do samples first. So samples, let's do uh, 256 samples. We're not going to use adaptive for this, but 256 samples, light paths. These are the bounces. And if you want to know how to save time on your renders, look at the card here where I talk about uh, the top five, or not top five, but just five ways that you can reduce your uh, render times for using cycles. But I'm going to go ahead and go into light paths here, change this to uh, full global illumination. And that puts 128 on everything. It's probably a little overkill, but it really does uh, make a difference sometimes when you change this to a full sample. And since we're just doing one uh, image here, it's completely fine. I'm actually going to move this. I'm going to hit control or grab on the uh, Z here or everything but Z. You know what? I'm just going to leave it. Never mind. So make sure that you have reflective caustics on here and the refractive caustics here. And then go to here. So right here where it says view layer properties. Go where it says passes. Check on the denoising data. We're going to save here. And uh, then, ah, I remember. That's what I wanted to talk about. We are going to go to performance. Now what I have is this auto tile size here. So if you go to edit preferences and you go to add-ons and you look for auto tile size right here, you can check that on. And for me, I know that the best size is 512 by 512. But what this will do is it will make the exact tiles that will fit within my, uh, my settings right here in my dimensions. So it's going to automatically set it to 480 by 432. So it is a little bit better. I'm going to save here. And then we're going to go ahead and render this out. One more thing that I forgot before we uh, send this over to render. I forgot to do a couple things. So let's clean up a little bit. Let's take this cup reference here. Let's right click to delete that. And I'm gonna just, just going to delete this out of here. Oops. Delete all of these. Um, you could put all these in different collections and all that stuff too, but that's fine. What I forgot to do is I forgot to take the camera and for the depth of field, for focus object, select the cup. Okay, that way it'll be focused on the cup before we do our render. So make sure that you have all your stuff set here with your tile size, either using auto tile size or putting it in yourself. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit F12 here. So here's the uh, test render. There's a couple things that I want to do. Uh, I think that what I want to do is I want to pull this edge of the cup up a little bit, which means I'll have to edit all of these, but that's actually pretty simple. And I'm going to show you quickly how I can do that. Um, and then the other thing is I kind of want a little bit more light on the front and to pull down a little bit more of the lighting from the back. So let's go in here and I'm going to take the uh, strength here and I'm going to knock this down to maybe a 0.35. I'm going to split my panel here. I'm going to add a bit of lighting here. I'm going to change this to a 750. Then for this one, we'll go 750 divided by 2, so 375. And let's see what that kind of looks like real quick. Let's maybe pull back a little bit more on the background. Yeah, I think that allows this to kind of pop out a little bit more right here. So then we're going to just adjust all of these where the top of this is a little bit higher because it's a little bit close to this handle right here. So if I go to solid mode here, I'm going to go here, go into edit mode and select this top ring. Hit control plus to just grab the top here. Go to the front view, hit G and Z and just pull that up maybe just like that. Check that really quick. 
Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So then all I really need to do here is all of these, if I select them all with Shift, hit Tab, I can edit them all at once. Hit Control, or uh, sorry, Alt A to deselect everything. And then if I hit uh, Front Slash on the numpad, and then select that top edge, this right here on all of these, with Shift and Alt, just like this. Oops. Just like that. And then hit Control plus one time. I can grab all of those top uh, edges there. And then just pull that down a little bit on Z, just like I did before, except for I did it you know, in the up direction since it was oriented that way. Hit Tab, hit Front Slash, go to Front View so I can view this uh, the plane here for the table. Oops. Grab it on Z and just move it up so that they're all just sitting on the top of the table, just like that. Okay. So hit Control S to save, and we'll do one more render. Okay, so here's our final image. You can see that there's a little bit of noise going on over here, so you could increase the samples or something like that, but we're not gonna. We're gonna go ahead into compositing, and don't be afraid, use nodes, and you'll see all of this stuff here. So let's move this over here to the left. Let me, uh, I don't know if I can actually, I'm not gonna be able to turn on the screencast keys here. So just look on the bottom left here, um, the bottom left over here uh, for the keyboard and the mouse commands. And I'll say them as I do them as well. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first start off with some stuff that I think is many times glossed over by other um, uh, tutorials and uh, uh, online instructors. And we're gonna actually do some color correction here. So first, bring up the color correct, and really the only thing that I'm doing is I just wanna show you that it's here. So if you wanna do some adjustments in this, you can. But I'm going to just use this to take the master for the saturation and put this down to a 0.5, okay? And if you have Node Wrangler on, Control Shift, left click, you'll be able to view through here. And if we go to view over here, we can bring this down a bit. But we're actually gonna split this panel here and normally I would use my double my other screen on the right to do this, but you can't really see it. So I'm going to go over, over here and I'm going to change this to image editor. And up here, do a search. When you click on this, do a search for viewer node. And you'll be able to see everything that's going on over here. Okay. Then on the left, you're going to bring out a thing called scopes. And over here, this is basically all of the light and dark values in your image. And it's being read this is reading this image right here. So if I take the saturation, and I move it up to a one, you can see that thing shifted. And if I take the contrast and I move this, let's say to a 0.5, you'll see what it did over here. Now keep in mind that whatever adjustments you make, I'm gonna take this back and move this to a 0.5, whatever adjustments you make might take a while for you, um, depending on what your GPU and CPU is like. So this may take a little bit of time. You might wanna render something out in a, you know, uh, maybe 1920 by 1080 first, and then go to a higher resolution or something like that, or you might just want to wait. It's really up to you. So what we're going to then do is we're going to add, if we go to color, color balance, there's all of these things here. And this is where I like to, um, and this was, this was shown to me more by, um, by Tony Day, uh, is using something like this uh, technique to do your color balancing and everything. What I like to do is... I like to play with the lift gamma and gain to sort of create a different sort of look over here. And if I take the, uh, over here, the lift, and I pull this up a bit, if we uh, view through it properly, you can see that it sort of like whites out the image, okay? But then if we take the gamma here and we pull this down, it kind of darkens it a bit. What we're basically doing is we're taking the lights, the, uh, lights and the shadows and um, the mid-tones, and we're just sort of like moving those values around, okay? So if you look at the waveform monitor here with the scopes, what I want, what you kind of want to do is you never really want everything to be crushed down here towards black, okay? And you never really want everything uh, crushed up at the top either, where it's all way up here. You want to kind of avoid that. So that's kind of the guidelines to go by with this. But really, I like to just sort of 
play around with these a little bit to get the midtones maybe somewhere around here. Take this and move it up. And you can see that we're basically changing the contrast and the shadows and the uh, highlights. And we're just kind of moving those values around. So you can play with these to get a better sort of like balance to your image. So I'm looking at that bottom there and I'm making sure that the shadows aren't getting crushed down in here. And maybe we went a little bit too far with the desaturation, so I'll put that at a 0.75. So that has a nice little sort of goldish uh, tone to it. And what you can also do here is you can color some of these channels as well. So for the lift, you can add, see that uh, added a little bit of a yellow over the top. You can see the shadows here are being sort of like put as a yellow. And if you change this value here, you can see that you're also coloring the film a little bit. So if your image ended up looking a little bit too blue or a little bit too warm, you can use these values here to sort of change up the overall look and tone to neutralize those colors. So I would advise that you, you know, sort of look up what all of these things do, the lift, gamma, and gain, play around with it, get something that you really like, um, and balance your image out before you end up saving it. So I'm going to sort of speed this up a little bit to get uh, closer to what I really want this to be. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm okay with. Uh, the next thing that you can do here is you can go filter. Uh, sorry, add filter, add a glare. And don't worry about the denoise, we're gonna add that, add a glare here. And if we look through it, we're gonna change this to fog glow, change this to high, and we're gonna change this mix to actually, cause what it does here, if you take a look, it adds this sort of glow effect over the top, see that? And we're just gonna take this mix here and we're gonna go to negative 0.5 which will sort of like soften how strong that is. So it's added there, but not too crazy, just like that. And then we're gonna add, if we go to distort, go to lens distortion, and we're just gonna add a little bit of a distortion here. So 0 0.01, make sure you click this fit one here, this uh, fit checkbox, let me zoom in a little bit this right here. Go to distort, add a 0 0.01, and then a dispersion, a 0 0.01. It'll kind of give a little bit of a distortion to the image to make it look like it was shot on an actual uh, camera lens. Uh, and the dispersion will add a little bit of an image dispersion effect. So if we look through it, which it will take a little bit of time compositing, you can see that there's a little bit of a, you can see the red and blue channels, red, green, and blue channels there a little bit. Uh, that's that dispersion effect plus the edges are a little bit rounded because of the lens distortion effect. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to over here, and this is where, um, this is like the last thing I add because it tends to take a while if you're trying to add all these other compositing nodes. If you go to filter, denoise, then over here you take the image, then you take the denoising normal, then you take the denoising albedo and then pipe that into all of this stuff at the end. Ready, set, go. It'll take a little bit more time compositing, but we should see what should be our final image with a denoise pass put over the top of it. And there we go. So if we zoom in, you can see that some of those issues with the background have been resolved and we have a fairly clean looking image here. Let me just get rid of all of this. 
And I showed you how to do a little bit of noise, um, or sorry, a little bit of color correction here. Some of this is a little strong, um, so maybe backing off a little bit might help neutralize it a little bit. But basically, you can play with this and get the color balance. Blender isn't the best to do this with. That's why I'm kind of glossing it over it relatively quickly. Photoshop or GIMP or something like that is a better one to do these final passes. Or if you're doing a full video using Natron or something like that is a little bit better. But now that you know how you can use that, you can play with these and uh, uh, get an image that's a little bit colored the way that you'd like it to be. So then what we'll do here is we'll go Image, Save As and uh, make sure your compression is set to zero. Navigate to your location. So I'm actually going to call this render. And inside of there, I'm going to call this uh, coffee cup render. And this is with the layer weight. So once again, I'm going to show you what the layer weight looks like, uh, or the render looks like with the layer weight, and then without it, you can see whether or not that was useful for you. And that's basically going to be it. So hopefully you've learned a lot about how to uh, model an object, add some custom textures, add some really cool looking materials, and get something that's really nice and professional looking for your portfolio. Hopefully you take these ideas and you start to create your own vintage coffee cups and vintage objects, uh, as well as the saucer. If you'd like, I can do more tutorials on how to do like a spoon or how to create the sugar cubes or how to create any of the other objects that you saw in this image here, which is the, uh, the overall set that I was kind of playing with. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see any other kinds of tutorials or a series. And I will see you guys next time on the next series of DJ Tutorials.